Hey everyone, and welcome to my cozy little home. I'm Sally, and I'm so glad you're here. Somehow it is officially December, and with that in mind, I've been getting my home ready for the holiday season. Now, a few of you asked for a Christmas decor DIY video, and so I am here to deliver. I wanted to keep this super affordable, so I used mostly things I already had on hand and spent less than $10 on new supplies. But listen, before we get DIYing, we need something cozy to drink. So here I'm showing you how to make my favorite go-to hot chocolate recipe. You can make this with as few as three ingredients, and while it's delicious, I do want to say I consider it more of an everyday little drink than like an indulgent snow day fireside hot cocoa so bear that in mind but all i've added is two cups of non-dairy milk we tend to stay away from dairy but you can use whatever you want and here i have some raw cacao powder cocoa powder works fine um, i know that cacao is high in magnesium and i imagine cocoa powder is too but that's something that a lot of us don't get enough of so i think it's awesome to be able to incorporate it into a fun drink like this I am adding two heaping tablespoons of the cacao powder, but you can add however much you want um, in terms of chocolatiness. Then I'm adding about two tablespoons of maple syrup. This is a two serving recipe, I should clarify, and it's not super sweet. I like it on the lighter side, but you're welcome to, of course, add more if you prefer. Honey works, and you can use regular sugar, but I figure why not use maple syrup um, or honey when you have the option. So now I'm just giving it a good whisk. I have it about over medium heat. You just wanna watch it so you can avoid the milk scalding and get everything nice and combined. Just whisk, whisk, whisk. <laughs> if you want your hot chocolate to be just a little bit extra creamy and indulgent, something I like to do is grab a piece of dark chocolate, such as 70%, 72% dark chocolate. I'll break it up into little pieces, melt it into my concoction and combine. Now at this point you can really do whatever you want. I'm going to enjoy it just like this, but you can also add a little hint of peppermint extract. That's one of my favorite things to do. Or you can add some cinnamon and a lovely evening concoction that I'll sometimes make um, if I'm feeling stressed out or having trouble sleeping is I'll make this hot chocolate base and I'll add a little bit of reishi mushroom powder. By no means take that as professional advice, but it is something that has worked for me personally. And of course, we've gotta add some marshmallows. So that's it with the hot chocolate, but before we go any further, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel and you have been enjoying these videos, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me and be probably a bigger help than you realize. Anyway, on to the next, we are going to make some dried orange garland. So I've got three oranges here that'll make you about two garlands. Um, you can kind of feel it out, see how long you want them to be, but I'm slicing the ends off until I have the nice segmentation, so to say, visible. I'm saving the ends, I'm gonna use them for something else later. Your goal here is just to get those slices as even as you possibly can. Next, you're gonna line a baking sheet with parchment or in my case, some reusable parchment alternative. I've preheated the oven to about 250 degrees and I'm laying my orange slices out on the parchment. As you can see, I didn't do the best job of getting them even. That's okay, but you might notice a little bit later that some don't dry out quite as well as the others. Slide these right on in to dry for about three hours. It might take significantly longer or shorter depending on your oven. You wanna keep the door cracked. Mine didn't wanna stay open, so I just put a pair of metal tongs there in between the door and the oven itself to keep it open. Once the orange slices are dry, you're gonna lay them out and you're gonna find some nice string. I just got this pretty silver and white string at Home Goods. It was like three or four dollars total. So I tied a knot in the end to keep it from fraying. And now I'm gonna grab this chopstick and I'm gonna poke a hole in about the same area of every orange segment. After I poked holes in each of my orange slices, I estimated the amount of string I was going to use, bearing in mind that I wanted to put about an inch and a half to two inches between each slice. 
So now I'm going to just begin threading the string through the hole that I poked in each individual orange slice and knotting it on. I tied a double knot around each orange. It's as easy as that. I think this is a super simple, natural touch that you can add on a coffee table like I did here or even drape around your Christmas tree. I'll definitely plan to do that once we get ours. We just haven't acquired it yet. The next thing we're going to make is some stovetop potpourri. I've seen this around quite a bit and I had to try it for myself and I was so pleased with the results. So here I'm putting in those leftover orange pieces from before as well as a few additional slices. You could just cut up a fresh orange and put that in. It would work. You've got a lot of flexibility with this recipe so really you can combine whatever scents you like but just focus on aromatics if you really want to develop a rich smell. I get the impression that cranberries, while beautiful, really do not smell like anything. So I've also added some cloves, which I loved. I added about mm, one and a half to two teaspoons and some fresh sprigs of rosemary that I just pinched off my little rosemary tree, as well as about a teaspoon of vanilla. And that vanilla does make a big difference in terms of just the intensity of the smell, but also bringing everything together. All that's left to do now is add some water. You can add as much as you want, but you wanna make sure it covers the orange slices. Now, as you have it on the stove, if you're boiling it for more than a few minutes, which I don't see why not, you wanna make sure you're revisiting it, adding water so it doesn't boil dry. We're gonna head on over to the stove and I'm simmering it at about medium to get it started, taking it down to super low, you just want as minimal of a simmer as you can maintain and it will fill your home with the most wonderful smell. My husband especially absolutely loved it. Next up, we're going to make a little bit of DIY Christmas wall art. Something super easy um, that I think just about anyone can paint are some beautiful Christmas trees. I saw this idea on Pinterest. That's where I always go if I want some painting inspiration because I am absolutely not an artist. So I just used three colors here. I had some gold, I had some dark brown, which we'll see in a little bit, and I had some like olive green. And as you're seeing right now, I'm just painting out those trees with two parallel slanted kind of parallel lines going down. And then I'm going to fill in with some gold. I thought this was a really beautiful accent and way to spice it up a little bit. I decided that the landscape needed a little bit of balancing out. So while I had the gold paint on my brush, I added some sky, I guess we could say, to the one corner a little bit on the other side. And then I took it down to be kind of a shadow something on the ground. Again, not an artist, but I think that it kind of balanced it out, made it look warm and cozy and nice. Now I'm just going in with brown paint to draw my tree trunks. The mistake that I made here was not putting these on the paper before I started the rest of the painting, it would have looked a little bit more natural. So I would definitely recommend drawing your tree chunks first and then going over with the leaves per how trees actually work. What I then did was take some green paint and some gold paint and draw those little slashes back over or paint the little slashes back over to even it out. And a little fun fact is, um, random dream of mine is to one day have enough property that we can have a little Christmas tree farm in the back just for us where we grow Christmas trees and every year we can cut one down for ourselves and plant a new one. But that's it. I thought it turned out really cute. There are lots of different ways you can do this and I ended up putting it over my little workstation in my office. For 
For our last DIY, I am making some painted pine cones. There are a lot of different directions you can take this, but I wanted to keep it pretty minimal and natural looking. So all I did was go out into a local park and find these huge pine cones that we have plenty of in Wilmington. I think most places have pine cones, even if they're not this big. Um, but even if you need to get some at the craft store, they're not that much money at all. There's so much room for creativity here, but on this one, I just went in and painted the inside part of each individual component or the upper part gold. And you'll see in a minute that I do the same thing, but in white on another one. And on that one as well, I kind of go on the outside portion and you'll kind of have a comparison so you can decide what works best for you. I've also seen it done where you put glitter on the outside of the pine cone or on top of everywhere you paint and it's so cute, but I wanted to avoid getting glitter everywhere. So <laughs> I stayed away from that option this time. Once my pine cones were fully dry, I just arranged them in this beautiful silver and glass bowl that I have. I think they turned out wonderfully and especially paired with that dried orange garland. I love the natural touch that they brought to my kitchen table. And that's a wrap. Please hit that like button if you liked what you saw in this video. And of course, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world. Let me know in the comments what you've tried from the video. Until next time.